Hey everyone, Dr. Frunke here with a review and final diagnosis on the Brian Nadeau Mini Typhoon. Now, let me just preface this discussion by saying this is a custom knife. There will be multiple iterations of this knife. None of them may be the exact same as this particular knife. So understand that this review uh, is somewhat limited in its uh, ability to actually review this piece. This is really just going to be a, uh, more of an overview and an experience uh, discussing this particular knife that I've had. So I was very fortunate to come across this knife by way of Instagram. Uh, I follow uh, Brian Nadeau. He goes by Sharp by Design, uh, at Sharp by Design. That's his company's name. Uh, and he posted a post that had this knife in all gray that was just magically available to purchase. And so being the impulsive person that I am, realizing that I had a little bit of money sitting around, I bought the knife immediately. I asked him if I could have it, and he sold it to me right away. And uh, he was very nice to interact with. Um, he responded very quickly. He received my payment, and then he said, uh, is there anything else you want to do to it? Uh, I asked him to give it a bronze anodization. He did it then and there and shipped it to me the same day. So really nice turnaround there. I'm very, very lucky. I totally missed uh, when he opened his books earlier this year. And I've seen uh, all the different versions. Understand that this knife comes in a bunch of different configurations. There are some slab-sided ones. There's a ventilated one. There are some different milling patterns that are available. Um, and if you ordered one through his books, you probably know all those configurations. Uh, in addition, there are different blade configurations as well, and we'll kind of go through that on this particular knife. Uh, so this is a fairly unique piece. There may not be another one like it, but in essence, all the knives are more or less the same. These are going to be a very limited production run. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many there are going to be made. He may have list listed that on his website. In any case, it's a limited production, full custom knife. Now, uh, this sort of falls into that category uh, of knives that are made by machines, but made by one person. So we're talking about Curtis F3s, we're talking about Grimsmo Norseman, we're talking about uh, Brian Ty here. Uh, some of these are super, super customized knives, but they're made predominantly by machines, but it's these individuals that go out of their way to program and create and source these things and create them for us. That's what this is. That's what Brian has done with this knife and all of his knives. And uh, if you check out his history, his Instagram, his website, he's done some incredible things, made some beautiful pieces, and he's been recognized for his quality and his uh, manufacturing abilities. He's won Best Tactical Knife three times in the last four years at the Blade Show. Uh, or something like that. He won again this year for his Nemesis model. Uh, really, really awesome stuff coming out of his brain and his shop there. And he is a one-man shop. I think he helps. He runs it with the help of his family. Uh, but, you know, th he's doing a great job. So let's go ahead and get into this knife here and break it down anatomically so we know what we're working with. Up front, we've got a 3.5-inch blade of CPM S90V. Now three and a half inches is measuring from the end of the handle out to the tip of the blade. You have about three inches of cutting length from tip to tip there. Uh, you increase that a little bit by having that Tanto tip right there, but uh, three inches is that measurement. Uh, it's sporting about 0.16 blade stock and it is S90V. A super, super nice steel known to be very tough, uh, corrosion resistant, and holds an edge really, really nicely. It's a rather unique steel. People are kind of afraid of it sometimes because they say that it's hard to sharpen or that it's tough to really get it into a nice grind, but he's done a beautiful, beautiful grind here. This is called the Clipped Japanese Tanto. So it's got a Japanese Tanto style blade, which differs from his American Tanto that has a much straighter uh, tip out here. This has that nice belly on the tip. Uh, and then its clip has got a clip point right here. Uh, and so it's, that's sort of two options that are available. First the Japanese Tanto blade shape and then the clip point. And I thought that was just really striking. I think that that is a beautiful, beautiful grind. It's done very well and it came very sharp. I love S90V. S90 is a steel that sort of feels like it has teeth to me. I don't really know how to describe it, but whenever I cut with it, it feels like 
there are a lot of small little saw teeth tearing through something really nicely. That's that's how I feel about S90. Uh, anyways, it has a little bit of jimping up top that's perfectly placed. It works nicely. There's a lot of traction there, but it's not too sharp. Uh, he's done this blade in a nice uh, acid stone wash. It's very subtle. It's a very nice user-friendly uh, look, and it's, you know, non-reflective. So it's keeping in that tactical sort of purpose that he made this knife for. It is a flipper deployment. He's got a relatively unique looking flipper. To be honest, to me, that harkens sort of a Japanese style feel. So having that in combination with the Japanese Tanto, I think that's just a beautiful combination of shapes. Uh, and you just can't deny that. I think it's just beautiful. This with the tip out there, I think it's a very balanced look and it's, it's nice to me. Now, it is a fairly large flipper uh, and it is pokey. It will poke things in the pocket. It does stick out a lot. But it's a it's got beautiful action and it flies out of the handle and it's always very easy to deploy and I do like that. Now it, it does suffer a little bit from that longer uh, flipper tab so that you can't really cut straight down with it. But this is meant as a tactical knife and in that vein it actually acts as a guard in that way uh, and so that's very effective like that. I, I really appreciate that design for what this is for what this is supposed to be. It runs on stainless steel ball bearings. Very, very, very smooth action. This has a very unique deployment for one particular reason. Inside there is a unique detent system. Uh, let me break out one of my lights here. They're all packed away right now. I was just taking them somewhere. Uh, inside of there, I'll pull out my brass Olite S1 baton. Beautiful uh, light right here show you the inside here. So there's a detent ramp that is actually milled into the over travel stop or the lock bar insert right there. It's a very prominent lock bar insert. Meets up with the blade nicely, early lockup, hardened steel. But that little detent ramp serves uh, as the detent instead of a ball and it's very smooth in both directions. Number one, on deployment it has the perfect amount of retention launches the blade out. When the blade locks up, it's got a very smooth sort of connection where it just sort of locks into place. There's not a two-stage thing. A lot of knives have sort of a two-stage lockup. Listen to this Chris Reeve. One, two. As it comes over the detent ball. Not so in this knife. It's just a one, one-stage thing right there. Um, and same thing when it's coming close. It's, there's no other surface for it to go over the lock bar and then the detent ball it just goes over it all at once and it's a beautiful thing very very nicely done there moving back uh, to the handles we've got beautifully sculpted titanium handles here this is what drew me into this particular knife I love the design here I prefer this to all of the other ones that he has he said this might be called his art deco style or his milled style he doesn't actually have an official name for it uh, I'm not sure what to call it either. I, I would just call it his 3D milled pattern, but it is gorgeous. It's beautiful to look at. It changes color in all the different lights that you put it in, and it provides a functional thing. It's got some grip right here for when you're holding it while flipping. This, bolst this faux bolster look is really, really nice. The thing I love about it the most, particularly with his clip, is on the back. When you're putting something in and out of the pocket, that milling almost funnels the stuff underneath the clip and makes it work perfectly. So that's the important part I want to get to now, the pocket clip. It's very unique on this knife. Some might even call it ugly. It's honestly a bit unsightly with, that, with the rest of the design of this knife, I'm not going to lie. He knows that, but he designed a very perfectly user-friendly clip. This thing has the absolute best retention and ease of use of any clip I've ever used, period. Spyderco, Kershaw, we knives, you name it, this is the perfect clip right here. Uh, I, he's bent it just right for this knife and it's absolutely spectacular. In and out of the pocket with absolute ease. There's enough of the knife sticking out here to pull it out. It's not the lowest riding knife ever, but it's not an aggressive thing that you're seeing out here. There is a nicely anodized backspacer going on back here. Gotta love that. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. I can't believe how well uh, put together this thing is especially seeing how it's coming from one guy. So super happy with that clip. Now the important thing to also know about it is that it has no screws. Okay, it dives into the frame. 
and then underneath it's trapped so there's a little pocket that's milled out we'll bring our light back in here there's a little pocket that's milled out on the inside of the scale there yeah you see that and then the clip tucks underneath the backspacer the backspacer being screwed into place so that is how the sort of counter torque and the tension are maintained there and it's really nice now it's got a lot of spring to it I don't want to overbend it but in my experience tucking this into any type of pant or any sort of pocket just works beautifully and I've really really enjoyed that super happy with that so uh, let's see this knife is was also appealing to me because of its overall size it's got about a four and a half inch handle and a three and a half inch blade then it sort of reminded me uh, of my other favorite three and a half inch blade and that's the ZT0392 series now this is my brown gold they look very similar they've got that look going on I'll just go ahead and get my other one out here just to uh, have some fun on the camera here for a minute there we go uh, so definitely falls in line with that but he's done such a good job of tucking that blade into the handle you can see there's pretty much the same amount of blade but the handle is significantly shorter than these knives uh, so that's a job well done right there uh, and it, it definitely helps uh, in terms of making it a smaller package for carrying now what that sort of sacrifices to me is a little bit of that comfort I might have preferred to have a slightly larger handle uh, because it would have felt a little bit nicer to me in my hand uh, and we'll get to that at the end of it um, I've got a couple of other knives we can compare this with here uh, as I had before we've got the uh, small Chris Reeves knives sub small Sabenza right there sorry for the glare on the screen uh, I've got a uh, let's see my Gavco Trasher right here chiseled Trasher this is also a three and a half inch knife but there's just something about this knife that I feel like fits my hand a little bit better I like the ergonomics there a little bit better this is a very straight handle right here and while it looks pretty uh, on the on the table here uh, it's maybe not the most comfortable handle in the world uh, and the, the ergonomics are not exactly perfect because of the straightness now there's no hot spots it's not uncomfortable to hold but in terms of actual cutting ergonomics uh, it could it might be a little bit more comfortable to have a little bit of a bend to it now um, what else here let's see let's look at the weight uh, my particular configuration is going to be different than some of the others like I said some of them are ventilated this one's coming in 4.85 ounces so a super lightweight knife for that much titanium that's going on there the external parts have been milled internally it is not milled at all gives it a nice solid feeling that that right between four and five ounce feeling is a nice area to play around in it feels very solid and uh, I definitely enjoy it so uh, how does this thing EDC very nicely the blade shape is ideal uh, for almost all cutting tasks you have a very nice long flat section right there you do have a little bit of belly and you have sort of that sort of rounded tanto tip right there that allows you the piercing uh, and the draw cutting ability right there it's got a reinforced tip nice stabby blade right here pokes into just about everything with that clip point absolutely love it it's very comfortable in the hand I will say that uh, like I was mentioning earlier uh, I think a little bit of more downward angle and more comfort like that might have been perfect for more cutting but this is designed as a tactical knife and so stab cuts and then slashing cuts are things that this is designed to do it's got very good uh, grip in the hand it's not going to come out very easily it's not too hard it's not too heavy and the clip works beautifully every single day all the time so what is my final diagnosis on the Brian Nadeau Sharp by Design Mini Typhoon? Well, my final diagnosis is everyday tactical right here. It is the perfect everyday tactical knife. It really is. It's the right size. It's the right blade shape. It's the right materials. It's the right smoothness. It's just the right everything. Perfect centering. Perfect lockup. Super strong. Great materials. Well thought out beautifully made beautifully designed and just well executed now this particular model uh, cost me about seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, that was just sort of spur of the moment he had it available it may have been a little bit cheaper to go through the old school way of doing it I'm not sure uh, by ordering it through his books but that's what that you pay for quality and so that's something that someone has to sort of weigh 
uh, in their own mind before they pick something like this up. At $750, you could have a hell of a knife. Both of these 0392s cost less than that stock. Um, you can get uh, plenty, plenty, plenty of other knives. I, I've packed some of them up, so I don't have a lot to compare right here right now. But uh, you can get a hell of a knife at $750. So you'd really have to think about what makes a knife special to you. This one has that detent ramp, it has the clip, and it has the uniqueness of coming from a very special maker who's going to be doing great things in the near future, and he already has done some amazing things. Uh, someone to keep an eye out for. So go ahead and follow him on Instagram. Uh, he's at Sharp by Design. Um, follow him wherever else he might be on social media. Take a look at his website, SharpByDesign.com. It's got a beautiful history of some of the, uh, all of his other knives. And uh, go ahead and click like and subscribe to my channel here. Follow me on Instagram at uh, Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out this awesome little knife, uh, this mini typhoon, uh, this perfect everyday tactical knife. And uh, go ahead and stop by some other time. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.